Hey Z Stars, what's good in the hood? It's your girl Zara, aka Epic Zara, and I'm back today with another video for you guys. Today we're gonna be talking about something very near and dear to my heart because for the past few weeks, months, Mm, maybe the better part of a year. I low-key feel like my hair is not growing and I finally figured out how to solve that problem. Now I know a lot of naturals complain about stagnancy and struggles with length retention, etc, etc, etc when it comes to growing out their hair, but I'm here to show you guys how to stop that plateau and keep climbing up the mountain. So before we get into this video, please be sure to do these four simple things I always ask you all to do. Please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy this type of content. It really helps me out you guys please be sure to comment down below and let me know what types of videos you want to see please be sure to share this video with all of your friends and your loved ones and last but certainly not least be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time i post a new video thank you guys so much for supporting and let's get right into the video Guys, if you're trying to get over your growth plateau struggles, the best thing to do, in my humble opinion, again, it's an opinion, is to protective style. Now, this has worked wonders for me, and I know some of you are like, Girl, I don't need protective style. My hair grows all the way down my back, and I never ever protective style. I wear it out 25, 8. So I don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's fantastic for you, but it's not like that for every single individual. And let me tell you guys, protective styling has actually revolutionized my hair growth journey. If I know I want to reach the new milestone in my growth journey, I simply pop my hair in protective style and I leave it alone. Now I'm not gonna go too deeply into this because I have a whole video devoted to the wonders and the miracles of protective styling. And I'm going to actually link that right here so you guys can go and check it out. The next thing you absolutely, absolutely, without a shadow of doubt, have to do is deep condition your hair. Now, a lot of people are growing hair, like seriously growing hair, but the issue is length retention. It's breaking off as quickly as it's growing, so it looks like your hair's not moving an inch, girl or guy, and that's not fun. How I combat breakage is actually by deep conditioning every time I wash my hair. I also protein treat my hair. That's a different type of deep condition, and it's super duper fantastic for strengthening the hair and balancing moisture. Now, there are a lot of really awesome deep conditioners that you can buy. As you can see, these are some of my favorites, but you don't have to break the bank. You can actually pick up really exceptional natural products, products from the earth that you can use to deep condition your hair. And I actually have a video, which I'm going to link right here, devoted to all of the natural products of mother earth that will help you to grow your hair super long and strong. If your hair is breaking off, if you can't seem to gain more length, consider hennaing your hair. That is probably the most fantastic thing I've done for my very full head of hair. So you guys, I know my hair looks really, really thick, but it's not so much. It's very, very dense. The strands of my hair are actually super fine and henna has helped to strengthen my strands and make it easier for me to retain length and reach some certain length milestones. So <laughs> shout out to you, henna. You're the real MVP. Henna also deposits color, but that's not so much what I'm after. Again, I'm after the thickening properties. I have a video that goes way into depth about how fantastic henna is. You guys can check it out right here. I love it so much and I'm completely, completely, completely happy and pleased with the results of adding it to my regimen. Hold on you guys, I think we need to change the scenery. Okay guys, so the next thing to do is to be very consistent with your routine. So guys, consistency is extremely key when it comes to having a hair regimen and trying to grow your hair out and trying to remove it from that stagnant period because it's really important for balancing your protein and moisture levels. If that's out of whack, your hair is probably gonna be breaking off or turn into jelly, either one really, and neither of them are favorable. So you need to be super consistent with a healthy hair routine in order to see some growth, to see less breakage, and to be, you know, doing like this, I whip my hair back and forth or whatever <laughs> when your hair grows out. Okay guys, that was kind of a dry joke, but bear with me. On to the next one.
Okay, you guys, the next point is do not over manipulate your hair. Now, I know you're probably like, but girl, this is totally like protective style. Actually, not necessarily. It's more of an add on because even when you're protective styling, you can over manipulate your hair. It's not impossible. So, what do I mean by do not over manipulate your hair? Basically, don't be having your hands in your hair, popularly known as hand in hair syndrome. I used to suffer from it when I first became a natural, but now I'm pretty good at keeping my hands out of my hair. Now, why is over manipulation bad? It's bad because it can lead to split ends, it can lead to breakage, it can lead to drier hair, etc., etc., etc. The list goes on. Now, these are all things you need to really, really avoid if you're trying to grow your hair out. By default, curly hair and kinky hair are already weaker than their straighter counterparts because those hair types feature more twists and turns, you know, while that's really beautiful, those twists and turns are weaker areas of the hair that are more susceptible to breakage. So don't manipulate your hair too much, guys. It's already really delicate. Number six, try oil masks. So guys, oil masks are actually the GOAT. They are the greatest of all time. They've completely revolutionized my hair routine and done a lot to really help heal my damaged hair. And even my skin, you guys, oil has changed the game for me generally, and I use it in every area of life aside from eating. <laughs> Infusing the hair with really nourishing oils helps it to be more malleable, retain more moisture, allows it to break less. So oils are really, really beneficial overall. For me, my hair is actually naturally like really kind of dry and crusty, but oil <laughs> has made my hair extremely, extremely soft. If you guys want to see how I use oils on my hair and my skin especially to nourish it, to help the tone and texture, let me know and I'll let you know. <laughs> So guys, this may seem counterintuitive to some, but my next tip is actually to shampoo your hair as often as needed. Now I don't shampoo very frequently because I don't really need to, but I do try to at least do a mild shampoo every time I wash my hair. I mean, when it's free, that's like every one to two weeks. So yeah, I shampoo about twice a month, two to four times a month. And why is this important? Well, if you want your hair to grow uninhibited and unperturbed out of your scalp, you need to make sure that your scalp is free of debris and buildup. You cannot actually grow healthy hair if your pores on your scalp are clogged up. Now, I'm wildly against using conditioner only to be washing your hair. I think that's really dirty and gross. Don't at me. You guys can come for me in the comments, whatever, it's fine. But this is my opinion. And the reason why I say that is because it's very similar to trying to use fabric softener to be washing your clothing. Like, Sally, you are not gonna get clean if you're using fabric softener to wash your clothes. But it's fine, guys, you know? So, if you want to see your hair grow, if you want to see your scalp improve in health, be sure to shampoo your hair and your scalp regularly. But of course, don't overdo it. So guys, my next tip is actually to avoid heat. Please, please, please air dry and wear your hair in its natural state. Now, heat actually completely destroyed my hair and I'm gonna link that video right here. Like, it's really tragic, you guys. Heat completely just scattered my hair for me, but it's fine, you know? We managed to come back from that and now here we are with a full head of hair. But um, you guys, if you wanna see your hair flourish, definitely don't apply heat and use towels that are gentle, microfiber preferred to dry your hair. Air dry also, trust me, heat will only stunt your growth, thin it out and add to breakage. Even if you are protecting it, you're still likely to incur some sort of damage as a result of that heat usage. So guys, number nine, be sure to allow your hair and your scalp to breathe. Now I know you're probably like, Girl, what does that even mean? Well basically, what I mean is even after you take down a protective style, just let your hair chill for a day to a week. Of course, the amount of time you allow your hair to kind of just relax and not be doing anything will be dependent upon how long you kept in your protective style. But even when you're not protective styling, sometimes just putting your hair up in a very loose puff or a loose bun or a loose ponytail is allowing your hair and your scalp to chill. Now that's still considered like protective styling, but it's an exceptional way to really relieve the tension on your scalp, especially if you're tender headed like I am. Oh. 
Stop monitoring your hair growth. You can be your own worst enemy if you obsess over how much hair you've grown. So if you wake up one day and you're like, oh my gosh, I think I grew like half of a centimeter. Oh my gosh, I think I grew another half of a centimeter. And then the next day you're like, uh, did it grow? Did it grow? I don't think it did. Like, of course not, Sway. Yeah, it's growing, but it's extremely gradual. Growing your hair is a gradual process, so don't obsess. Just let it do its thing, and one day you're gonna wake up and you'll notice that you have, like, Pocahontas like hair, even Rapunzel. So, yeah, girl or guy, don't be obsessing. Just let it do what it do, and see your hair flourish. So guys, that's the whole video. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. Remember, if you feel like your growth is stagnant, don't give up. You can overcome that hurdle, you guys. I was able to do it, and if I can do it, you can too. Trust me, trust the process. Don't just trust me, trust that your hair is growing. And if you put the love into it that you need to, it will surely repay you tenfold, you guys. So I hope that these were super helpful. If I've left out any tips for getting over that, growth stagnancy please let me know in the comments below you know this is a community and i really want to help you guys as well as help myself because it's almost the end of 2018 and we're going to be super popping before the year's over so let's all grow our hair together you guys thank you so much once again i love you guys and see you in the next video but before I forget, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, comment down below. Once again, be sure to share this video with anybody who's struggling with hair growth and anybody else you think would want to see. And last but certainly not least, subscribe to this channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. And what do you guys think of the style of this video? Did you like this video? I mean, I liked kind of moving around. It kept me entertained. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you like this new style of editing. <laughs> Anyways, see you guys in the next video. I love you guys. Ta-ta for now.